Today we are firing up the 1951 Chevy with the turbocharger. Before we get started, I need to address some YouTube drama. There's a YouTuber named Pudding's Fab Shop. Uh, me and him have kind of had a back and forth. Really, our followings have kind of had a back and forth. A little bit of infighting. It all stems from the fact that he likes New Balance shoes, and I like Nikes. I mean, these are dirty. These aren't my best ones, but, you know, these are work shoes. Over here at Casey's Customs, or Nike, you know, over New Balance, it's not that big of a deal. He likes an inferior shoe. Some of the subscribers between our channels have kind of had a little bit of back and forth. Now that that conversation is over, today on Casey's Customs. Today on Casey's Customs, put and teleports in here to put a new balance up somebody's ass. I heard y'all were over here in the comment section talking about my new balances. What you gonna talk about next? These glasses, their prescription. Damn right, their prescription. I need to see which one of y'all to whip who are talking about me. I give a damn if you're a subscriber or not. Yeah, you. You know good and well I finish out every video saying sitting on your ass won't finish a project and what are you doing? Huh? Sitting here, huh? Cheating on me. Not even watching me, watching Casey. And you didn't think I'd find out? Huh? What was it? Did we not have chemistry? I felt like everything was going pretty good. And then I gotta walk in on this. Casey gets one rusty international and you go run into him. Just turn your back on old Gertrude here. You basically spit in the face of Edna here, who's got the trailer on, because we're gonna go to Texas tomorrow and pick up a project, so be sure to check out this channel and subscribe if you like projects. What's next? You're gonna act like old Wheel Hop Wilma just ain't the burnout champion? Boy, just when you think you know somebody. Man, I love talking crap to that camera. Welcome to Casey's Customs, where it's hosted by Casey and everything's custom. Today y'all's chassis swapping or 4 3 in or throwing a turbo on something. And you can bet, I'll bet you a dollar he's gonna raffle that son of a bitch off. Casey hosts more raffle events than the damn Indian casinos around here in Oklahoma. So I hope you enjoy the video. And if you talk about me again in the comments, it better be nice. Cause if not, I'm gonna throw on these new balances. I'm gonna hop in this yeehaw and I'll find you. I hope you enjoy this video and you win the car when your raffles it off. plan for today's episode is to spend the entire video trying to get the motor running. That was a plan, you know, before about 10 minutes ago when I changed my mind. We're still going to do that. I still want to get it running. I still want to get it really close to running. If I can't get it running, I want it very close. Uh, the, only, the only thing I'm worried about is if the computer needs tweaked. I'm 99% sure it does, but I should still be able to at least hear it running. It just might not be running well. Anyways, we're still going to do all that. The problem is this uh, front end is kind of driving me crazy that it's flat. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So if you didn't watch the last episode, what we did is I color matched this front end. We stretched this, I think, six inches or eight inches, 12 inches. But anyways, when I stretched it, it obviously needed metal work and all that. And what I did is I've done body work. I actually did lead, then body work. And then we've color matched the green and the brown. And it actually matches very well. The bottom here wasn't painted, but here was. You can kind of tell a little bit, but... The reason you can tell more than anything right now is the fact that this is just has a sanded finish. Um, I sanded it with like 220, so it just looks sanded, even though whenever you look at the greens, the greens are actually really close, almost perfect. So I think what we're going to go ahead and do before we take this front clip off or this hood off and just dig into the motor for the next, whatever, 25 minutes of video you're going to be watching, I think I'm going to go ahead and clear it. And uh, I have a cool clear that I've used before. It is called Poppy's Patina, and they have sent me stuff before, and I've used it, and I absolutely loved it. We used it on the 55 and we also use it on the 52 pontiac this is a wipe on clear coat it is not an oil it's not like a linseed oil that you wipe on and then it you know it needs reapplied in a month this is an actual clear with a hardening agent and it will you know it'll harden just like a sprayable clear but they basically have it where it's thin enough that it can actually be put on with like a nice microfiber towel. You can also just use a rag and uh, kind of just get whatever finish you want. We're gonna go ahead and do the clear on the front clip. <laughs> it might be super shiny now, um, but I think I have, oh no, no, I take that back. I have a matte finish, so it should just match perfect, but it will give it all like the same coating and 
it'll look a lot better and it'll just make my OCD happy essentially. So let's uh let's clear it real quick. Four to one. Oh my old nemesis math! Mix it and then start wiping. I'm gonna have to turn my heater on, which we all know I hate because it's loud and annoying. But if I don't turn it on, it's gonna be cold. It is currently 12.30 at night. I just got home from a uh, Christmas party. I mean, everybody else in the world would go to bed. I'm obviously in here trying to make YouTube content. For God's sakes, please hit the subscribe button. It's ruining my life. Uh, anyways, let's get to wiping. <laughs> so uh, I can't find any rubber gloves, so I got work gloves. That's really dumb, don't do that. Perfect now. This is this is green I made it, this is green I didn't. I mean, it is super close. I need a mask. I'm getting high, baby. Woo! Cheech and Chong! Way too much mixed. Holy shit. I did like three coats on that. I went ahead and just did a coat on the whole car, not the roof because we're lacing that bitch. But, ooh, I'm trying to cuss less. Front clip is done. Went ahead and just did a quick little, just a quick little, you know, quick little coat. How many times am I gonna say quick little? Holy crap. <laughs> I need to put my mask back on. Anyways, it looks great. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here now. It's like two in the morning and I'm lit. So uh, yeah, we'll let this dry for a day or two and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later. I should probably stop recording 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Check it out. It looks so good. I love the matte finish. The matte finish is just perfect. Like I said, I did the whole car except the roof. And you can kind of just barely tell. See how it's just a little bit shinier, a little bit cleaner. Has a little bit more, you know, flavor to it. But it's not like just deep gloss, which makes no sense. You know, I've, I, I do gloss on patina sometimes, so I understand. But like, it, it doesn't make sense. You're like, the, it shouldn't be that shiny. <laughs> so this looks great. I am so happy with it. And as you can see, like, there's the original green. And then there's the green I added. So, I mean, it looks so close. And like, the original green has some darker spots. Like, this is the original green. So, like, it looks good. It's hard to tell inside because the lights are giving it too much shine. But uh, whenever I pulled it outside yesterday, it looked perfect. OCD is happy. Now it's time to start trying to get this thing to run. So let's pop the hood off and start digging in, baby. All right, I'm starting to get stuff uh, hooked back up. Basically just hooking up all the stuff I unplugged and whatnot. And naturally, past Casey screwed over present Casey because, you know, I kind of do that every now and then. There's not a gasket on that exhaust. There's not a gasket on the turbo. The turbo is still loose. And the way I have it down in there, I can't tighten the bolt with it in the car. <laughs> and also, one of the flanges um, is threaded. This flange is threaded, and so it doesn't let you tighten it. So the flange, the, the threads actually need drilled out so you can tighten it down all the way. Stupid design. I don't know why they have it like that. I know these turbo kits are like universal, so I'm sure some model out there needed them that way, but mine sure doesn't. So basically I said all that to say exhaust needs to come off, turbo needs to come off, um, exhaust on the turbo side needs to come off, intake needs to come off, all that needs to come off, and then... Uh, I have a broken spark plug and a broken spark plug wire. So even after I do all that fun stuff, I need to go down to the parts store and uh, get some stuff. So, yeah. Crap. Oh, and by the way, I think I could pull it off putting the battery here. I actually have quite a bit of room. I think I can get away with having the battery here, but I, I don't want to chance it. I think it'll just be a pain in the ass, and it'll be like a Corvette where you have to take the wheel off to get to the battery, and I don't really want to do all that. So I think we're just going to go ahead and put it in the trunk. Um, I do have wiring that came with this kit. Yeah. There we go. I do have wiring, so I should be able to relocate the battery, so we'll do that as well. Did it come with 
um, a ground. Sweet, came with the ground too. So uh, we'll do that as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and yank all this exhaust stuff off first. Okay, got back from O'Reilly's. We got plug wires, spark plugs, a couple gaskets we needed, and I got a battery cable uh, for the back. It came with one, but I don't love it. It looks a little too short. So I think I can probably still use theirs, but if not, I got this. What we're gonna start doing now is starting to put our gaskets back together. We'll throw it back in the car, and I think we might be all right to crank it up. Well, I think we'll be all right to put the battery back in the trunk and then maybe crank it over, but I don't know. I could be talking shit right now. Okay, got our wastegate on. We can go ahead and put all this back now. New spark plug wires, new spark plugs, all that. I don't think you can see any of that uh, from where I'm filming, but uh, just know that's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'll, uh, I'll put the camera pointing down. I think you might be able to see a little something when I do that. So naturally, this is just turning into a huge job. I mean, every time I touch this freaking thing, it becomes a big deal. Uh, had to make mounts for everything. A lot of the stuff that I had in there before, um, I didn't tighten it down. I just kind of had it sitting in place. Once I started tightening stuff down, it didn't fit anymore. So I've kind of had to come in here, redo some stuff. Good news is I redid this and now this is actually mounted where it's at. It's not just kind of hanging out there with its weight on the turbo, which I like. So this is actually mounted. Um, I got a oil catch can. I don't even know if I'm gonna end up using that, but I got that all figured out. I got a bolt welded here for my ground because I got to redo all my grounds and stuff. The good news is after all this, um, air conditioning will still go in there, even though it's a super tight fit. Um, a lot of times when you run a turbo, especially in these, you won't have air conditioning, but I got this one figured out, which is awesome. I wasn't so sure on that for a while. Line they gave me is supposed to go from here all the way down by the oil filter. And it's like a 24 inch line. So it's obviously nowhere near long enough. So I'm going to have to order another one of those. But what I can do, um, I can pump some oil down this just to get it fired up, that'll be enough. It's, it doesn't, it just needs some oil on the bearings. I'm not gonna run it for very long anyway, but uh, it should still be okay. Uh, I need to extend some wires for my sensors because my intake isn't over there anymore. Now it's over here. So I gotta do some of that stuff. And I got a, um, a new V-band for the exhaust. I'm gonna go ahead and install that for now. And hopefully after that's done, it should be the last that I ever have to take the exhaust out of this. It should be done. My turbo exhaust will all be done. The exhaust coming out of the turbo goes to about the, I don't know, the rear of the car. And what I can do then is put mufflers on it out the back, but I should be able to have all that done far enough to where I can at least get it running. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the exhaust, splice some wires and uh, throw the battery in the trunk and maybe we'll see if we can get it turning over and kind of go from there. Okay, exhaust is pretty much done on both. Not too bad. I think I have, I think there's one flange down there that's not bolted, but I'm not, that's fine. I'm just trying to see if the damn thing's gonna run. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to get the battery installed in the rear. And what I did is I welded, I welded a stud on the frame so that my original uh, battery ground can go to that stud. So now, the ground is on the frame. And then what we need to do to hook our battery up is get it grounded to the frame again. Luckily, I have a perfect spot right here. This is the kick up of my frame for the airbag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just grind a spot to bare metal right here, or here probably. And I'll weld a stud on it. I'll weld a, basically a bolt on it. And then I can have a bolt and a nut that will be grounded to my frame. It'll be super heavy duty this way as well. You know, is we'll just have our battery come here and then I will snake the positive battery down the frame along the sides and it'll connect to the original spot and then it'll be back here now. Everything should be good. I should be able to get it tucked up under there really well. 
And after I do that, we will, uh, I don't know, probably hit the key and see what the hell happens. Okay, I think I'm completely hooked up, but I'm not sure. I need to adjust the battery. I don't see any lights on, but they flickered a second ago, so that's not good. Ooh! Oh, the lights are lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> okay, okay. I need to hook up the fuel stuff, even though it's not gonna work. I think that will, if it doesn't sense the fuel pump, I think it might not even spark. But if I have the fuel pump hooked up, I think I might be able to shoot some starting fluid on it and see if it's starting. If it doesn't do that, I'll pull a spark plug and see if I got spark or not. But uh, let me hook some shit up and we'll try this again. Okay, let's try this again. Um, I'm an idiot and I had something in the way of my fan. <laughs> I think I can put a lot of shit in there. Maybe blow something up. Obviously can't go there because we have a hood there so we need to make some mounting system for it and I don't know where I'm gonna put that yet uh, but obviously it can't get in the way of the wheel or any of that stuff so we need to figure that out too so I mean we, we have some we have some stuff we still have to figure out but I mean it's running <laughs> I'm so excited anytime you do these chassis swaps just because so many wires are cut and so many grounds have to be changed um, you know it's, it's really a lot of just work and this is one of the smoothest ones I've ever had, which is, which is crazy because, I mean, we've done so much turbo stuff. We've changed the exhaust. We've changed all the intake. Um, for it just firing up, it's just great. I'm so happy. Those of you who followed along for the F1000 build, um, it's a, that's a perfect example. This went as smooth as they normally go, and we still took like a month to get it running. After we had cut everything, we had a security issue. Um, it kept thinking that I didn't have the right key. I did have the right key. Um, I ended up buying a different ECU. We ended up doing all kinds of stuff. And what I ended up having to do it, with it was actually like hot wire the fuel pump. So now I have an on and off switch for my fuel pump. So everything still works. You know, all my, all my security stuff still works. But I mean, that was a full month we had uh, where I just couldn't get it to fire or we just fire for half a second and turn itself off. So <laughs> for this, I mean, that was, that was no bullshit no camera tricks that's the first time i turned it over whatever five minutes ago i heard it kick over i figured we'd throw some starting fluid in it to see if i had spark i hadn't even checked my spark usually whenever you're doing this you you pull a spark plug you check spark all that fun stuff i didn't do any of that so this was this was literally just hooking up on my wires getting my battery hooked up making a couple grounds turning it on and we got that lucky that it fired on the first turn uh so Super, super happy. I can't even explain how happy I am. Um, I still have stuff that needs plugged in. I just found one right there. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, but that should have been plugged in. <laughs> so we still have some stuff we got to do. My AC obviously can't sit there. So cool, man. Super, super excited. I know I say it every week, but like 20 hours a week in these damn YouTube videos. And obviously I get other content from it. You know, I post on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. Um, but in reality, I build these for YouTube and, uh, you just, it's hard to put in a lot of hours when you have a full-time job. <laughs> so I put 50 hours a week down in my shop. So, so much time in this one, but we got fired up. I'm very, very happy. I think I'm going to end it there. I'm so freaking happy. <laughs> yes, let's go. Thank you very much for watching. I am so excited. I'm sure you can tell on camera how excited I was. Very relieved. For it to start on the first turn is pretty crazy. Um, I don't know that's ever even happened to me when I've done these chassis swaps, so I'm very excited. We still have a lot to do with the motor stuff. Obviously, it did fire up, but I need, I still gotta have a coolant tank in there. I gotta mount the ECU. We gotta get the, you know, the lines ran on the AC. Quite a bit of stuff still to do. 10 pounds of shit in a one pound bag could have much room up in that front fender. We're gonna do all that on the next episode. Drive shaft made on the next episode. And then whenever the drive shaft comes back, we'll throw it in gear and see if we can't start the damn thing. So thank you very much for watching. 
please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff they tell you at the end of the videos, and check out some of my other videos. Peace. Love you.